In the work of Borderland Foundation and Center Borderland of Arts, Cultures and Nations, we can see several different dimensions of working with memory, with the past, with culture of remembering. It was a challenge, a major challenge for us, establishing our institution just after 1989, after the period of frozen memory, of not talking about the past, of different taboo uh, concerning the past. There was a moment of opening new debate, new knowledge, uh, new consciousness about what really happened before. So we inherited ruins of you know, former Jewish temples, temples, manor houses, uh, and of course uh, frozen memory about different conflicts, uh, relations between neighbors, uh, and so on. And suddenly all this uh, we can, we could somehow uh, explore again uh, why the question first the question would be why to touch it because maybe it would be easier just to go forward uh, uh, forget about what happened think about the future but the first experience we had at the borderlands that you can't make any step forward toward the future without asking the questions how it was before what is among the people uh, what is in the ground uh, about the ashes you feel under your knees? So it was, although we were very much focused on the future of building new Poland, new Central Eastern Europe, uh, uh, we were somehow uh, pushed and challenged by, mm, by the past and workshop the, the workshop we should create at that time was uh, also the work of, a workshop of culture of memory. And another question from, from very beginning was why you create a center, borderland center, international center of dialogue like we created in Krasnogruda, not a museum. You have a rich heritage of Jewish culture and life and history in your town. You inherited former synagogue, yeshiva school and former gym, uh, Hebrew gymnasium. So the most natural way for many people was to create a museum, a Jewish museum, same, the same in the Krasnogruda Menor House, which belongs before the war to Czeslav Miłosz, our Nobel Prize winner in poetry. Uh, writer uh, to his family, the easiest way and also the way which could work very well with tourism and so on was to create a museum. Uh, why not? Because for us um, the faithfulness to the tradition, to the past, to the people living before us lays not in commemoration, rather in continuation. So the question for us was how to continue the tradition of the borderland, how to go forward, having this background, of course, and richness, painfulness of the past, but uh, to open it for new creative work for new activities, for building connective tissue between the people again, which were uh, separated from one another, you know, put into uh, clashes and conflicts. So this is very much about our work, not to create a museum, but the living cultural center. So you can have a museum and a former Jewish klezmer music uh, but you can also uh, practice this music with the inhabitants of your region, 
which are not Jewish, but for uh, for them this kind of work, musical work, artistic work, memory work, cultural work, connects them with the past, but at the same time gives them opportunity to go forward, to create new music, to develop this music, you know, to to be. Um, uh, to be creative and free in uh, in the process uh, process of creation. Uh, uh, so this is very much about the work we do uh, concerning the memory itself and the workshop. I call it culture of remembering because it is a work you should do and you should learn how to do how to deal with this, how to explore, how to help people with the traumas and the bad conflicted memories. You should somehow develop a culture of memory, of remembering even rather as an active thing. Because I like more to say remembering because it puts memory into action and challenges you to do something with memory uh, in a dynamic process. And uh, three categories I would mention here how we understand our culture of uh, remembering. The first I call critical memory. The second I would call common memory. And the third one good memory. Why critical memory? You can't start the work on the borderlands without starting with yourself in critical way, autocritical way. So you, you do not have the legitimacy to expect from the others to open the uh, memories uh, if you will not w work with yourself, with your Polish culture, in my uh, case, with my Polish Catholic uh, history and culture, and to think about the dark sides of this past, of my past, of, of what happened wrong, of the mistakes we committed, and sins, and guilt uh, connected to us in the history, especially of the 20th century. So you do the work on your side, critically. You open the field of cultivating memory with your critical work on your own side. That's why, uh, so because otherwise it's very easy, you know, after communism to go, uh, to, uh, to take this path of apologetic uh, attitude to your history. You know, we were suffering, we were victims, uh, in the past, so now we have time to um, uh, to make this apologetic appro uh, approach to the past, which is which is something you should understand and and it's something needed. Uh, and everybody is doing around this. All cultural institutions around you, here around us, all politi all politicians, all political parties did it. But the borderland center is something more. It's about critical memory as well. And this is our field. Our, you know, if you do not expect that politicians will do it, if you do not expect that all cultural houses and institutions will do it, this is your obligation. This is your challenge uh, to, to take it. Uh, on your as 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 your work, uh, uh, so that's how we started in publishing books. You know, very painful for Poles and Catholics about Polish-Ukrainian relationships, about Polish-Jewish relationships, about the Yedwabne case. So we published young Professor Jan Gross' book, Neighbors, and many others, which were not easy for Poles. And uh, mm, but only thanks to that the opening is possible, uh, uh, and only through that you give a room for 
the others to join you in that kind of work. So doing that, of course, you don't think that you don't, because it's also very important, do, do not do it expecting or claiming that your neighbors will do the same. And if they will do, you will do. No, you work on your garden and you care about you know taking all the weeds because you understand that otherwise garden will die uh, or will not be uh, healthy yeah so you do this work is somehow understanding that it is for your own health of your body of your garden of your culture of your uh, society the second thing uh, I've mentioned is common memory. Very difficult thing because we tend to have our own memories and it's a human thing. We do remember as uh, personalities, as members of uh, family, uh, small uh, uh, society circles uh, and so on. We have things among us like uh, like common memories, but I am saying here about common memory, which tries at least it's ideal thing, and probably you will never achieve it. But at least we can try to embrace all memories, all voices, all feelings of people living with you in the whole neighborhood, in the whole community, to give them voice. Uh, sometimes which, go, which goes contrary to your own voice and your own understanding of the history, but you understand that you have it, yes? And even if you do not have these people among you, we have Lithuanians, we have um, old believers, Russians, uh, Greek Catholics, Protestants, and so on. But for example, we do not have Jews among us here. But even if you do not have them, you invite their voice or you explore their own painful history, uh, uh, trying to make the room for them, trying uh, to be hospitable also uh, for uh, these who are not present uh, today. Uh, so it's like uh, inviting people, we, we often call them returners, the people who had courage to came, come back um, uh, to the borderlands, you know, living today in Israel, United States, the West, different countries. Uh, and very often many of them promise to themselves never come back because of what happened. But suddenly, if you create a space like Borderland Center, which is hospitable and, and, and empathic to the other voices, sooner or later you will have them. They will visit you. They will share. And, and uh, the experience for them, it will be not only that you cultivate and, uh, and respect their own, but also you will challenge them to hear other voices. So it's very often the case happening with Jewish people coming to Seine and to Krasnogruda that for the first time they hear about the tra traumatic uh, fates of Lithuanians or Ukrainians or other people living at these borderlands because their own family memory, because of a huge tra a trauma like Holocaust was, you do not have room in that commemoration for the others. It's because you are so obsessed with your own tragic, uh, enormous pain. So the borderland is a space when, when you are invited to share and to be respected with your voice and your memories, but at the same time you are hearing others you are encountering others and you are trying to understand that there is something maybe broader than your own memory.
that there is something like a common memory we can contribute to. And the common memory, why, why it is so important? Because I think about the memory as something what you do not possess fully. The memory for me in that meaning is the other. A very important the other we can have in our life. Because the memory is always stranger to your own memories. This is something which not belongs to you only. The, the memory I am thinking now uh, about is not a memory, a Polish memory or British memory or Catholic memory or Jewish memory or uh, Beatniks memory and so on. It's something crossing these borders of generations, of nationality, of culture. It is not belonging. It is something what you do not possess as a Pole as a Catholic, fully, that you can be part of something. And this presence of such kind of memory is crucial for the community building, because only the presence of the stranger can build really fully your community. And the memory is a very important stranger in our, uh, in our life. And the third category I call the good memory, the most difficult one. Because uh, this is our experience of working on you know, different borderlands, even sometimes during the war, sometimes just after, like in Kosovo, like in Caucasus, like in Indonesia, I've worked. And the experience I, I, I've gained uh, in this work was that in each person, even from the deepest darkness of the conflict, hatredness, suffering and so on, there is something in you which demands doing good for the others which is inside you, like a spark of light, the belief in the other human being, and something like a compassion about the other's face, or something like a desire of giving a gesture, or making a gesture toward, toward somebody else, uh, across the front lines, to help the mother of different nationality, or uh, or your friends from before the war time. And these things are deeply inside us, especially after wars, after tragic conflicts. You, you, you are not allowed to share it because, you know, that's not the way you are becoming a hero after the war, helping the other. So, but it is real, it is something inside you. And you don't have language very often, you don't have culture to dig it up, to open it. So the borderland work is very often the work of making good memory present in a public space, creating rituals, artistic events, community actions, which helps people. You know, you do not insist anything. You just giving the space, the language, the culture to share it. And it's the most difficult thing. It's really, it, it needs the highest level of artwork and highest level of trust, the highest level of community building. But, uh, but it is how it works. You know? and, uh, and when you think about the reconciliation process after conflicts or bridging people in different situations, 
you always think how to address your work to something what concerns good memory in people on both sides or many sides of uh, of different uh, river banks and to, you think how to build this reconciliation process how to build this bridge having this potential this reality this spark of light which in all human beings are present.